All right, this is uh, part two of the in-class review. So this is going to be unit two stuff um, from the in-class review. Um, unit two had to do with our angle relationships, angle pair relationships. Um, so we have a two lines M and N being cut by a transversal L. It's the transversal cutting through the two lines. They don't necessarily have to be parallel, um, but we have a transversal cutting through the two lines. Okay, and then we have eight angles that are being formed. Four at the first intersection, four at the second intersection. Okay. Um, name all the corresponding angles. So the corresponding angles are the angles that correspond to one another. So if we pick up the intersection point, the first one, we pick it up and we put it on top of the second one, uh, the corresponding angles are the ones that are going to be on top of each other. So we pick this up and put it on top of here. Angle one is gonna be on top of angle five. So angle one and angle five are corresponding. They're the corresponding location. They're both in the upper left. So one and five are corresponding. If we pick up two or, or pick up the first intersection point and put it on the second one, two is gonna be on top of six. So angle two and angle six. They're both on the upper right, upper right, upper right. Okay. Uh, angle three corresponding with seven, the bottom left. Okay. And then again, if you pick it up, put it over angle four, it's going to be on top of angle eight. Corresponding angles are in the correspond, the same corresponding location. Name all the pairs of alternate interior angles. Okay, so again, we wanna focus on two words, alternate and interior. Alternate meaning opposite. So we're on alternate sides of the transversal, opposite sides of the transversal. So this is our transversal L cutting through, or I guess it's a T, I don't know if it's an L or a T, but we'll call it, we'll call it T, I guess. So this line T is our transversal cutting through lines M and N. So alternate sides of the transversal and then interior on the inside of the two lines. So angle three and angle six. They're interior, they're between the two lines, between the two lines and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. The other pair is going to be four and five. Angle four and angle five. Name all the pairs of alternate exterior angles. Okay, so again, alternate and exterior. So alternate sides of the transversal, so opposite sides of the transversal. Okay. And then exterior, meaning on the outside. So we want to be on the outside of the two, the two lines on and on. So on the exterior and alternate side, so that's going to mean one and eight. And the other one is going to be seven and two. So one and eight, two and seven are alternate exterior. Two and seven. If M and N turn out to be parallel, all of these three would be congruent. So if lines M and N are parallel, then corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, and alternate exterior angles are congruent, meaning they have the same angle measure. Next one, uh, same side interior angles. Okay. Same side, meaning the same side of the transversal. So either on this side or this side. And then interior, meaning on the inside of the two parallel lines or the two lines, M and N. So between the two lines, M and N. So between these two lines on the inside. And then same side. So that's going to give us three and five. Okay, three and five. So angle three and angle five. And then angle four. And angle six. Same side of the transversal in between the two lines. Uh, next one, name all the pairs, same side exterior. So same side of the transversal. 
Exterior meaning outside of the two lines. Okay, so same side. Exterior gives us one and seven. And then two and eight are same side. So angle two and angle eight. Okay, I'm gonna put vertical over here. Vertical and linear pairs. So vertical angles are defined um, as being formed by two opposite rays, two pairs of opposite rays. Um, or two opposite rays. Um, what we want to think of it as an X, and you want to do opposite sides of the X. So in our case, we're going to have um, one and four. So angle one and angle four. And then we're going to have angle two and three. Okay, and then we're going to have five and eight. And then six and seven. So opposite sides of think of two lines intersecting, and then it's going to be kind of the opposite sides. The sides, the angles. I mean, angles. Angles are crossing each other. Linear pairs are two angles that are both supplementary and adjacent. Adjacent meaning next to each other. Supplementary meaning uh, their angle measures add up to one hundred and eighty. So basically, there are two angles that form a straight line when put together right next to each other, or they, that are next to each other and form a straight line. Two angles that are next, right next to each other and form a straight line. So that's going to be one and two. So angle one and angle two. We can also have angle two and angle four. We can have angle four and angle three. We can have angle three and angle one. So these are a linear pair. They form a straight line. These are a linear pair. They form a straight line. And then these are a linear pair because they form a straight line. Two angles that are right next to each other that form a straight line. So they're supplementary and adjacent. Then down here, it's the same. Five and six. Six and eight. Eight and seven. And then angle seven and angle five. Okay. Um, next one. Okay. So we want to say which of those angle pairs is going to be congruent, which is supplementary. Okay, there's four that are going to be congruent and four that are supplementary. So this is under the condition if the lines are parallel. So if if these lines M and N are Okay, Ang which angle pairs are congruent? So we know corresponding angles are congruent if the lines are parallel. So the corresponding angle theorem says um, there's corresponding angles. So if the corresponding angles are, if the, if the lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. We also know alternate interior. The alternate interior angle theorem says if the lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay. So here we have a transversal cutting through two parallel lines. And these are going to be our alternate interior. So this is M and N, M and N, and M and N are parallel. M is parallel to N, M is parallel to N. Okay. 
We also have alternate exterior. So, and if we have M and N, if M is parallel to N by the alternate exterior angle theorem, if the lines are parallel, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. So alternate exterior angles are congruent. Then the last one we have are vertical angles. Okay, if we want to draw them in two lines intersecting, it's kind of like the opposite sides. More formally, it's the angles formed by two pairs of opposite rays. Um, we want to just think of it as an X, and then you want to go opposite sides of the X. Okay, which angle pairs are supplementary? So what do we have? We have same side interior angles. We also have same side exterior angles. Okay. So same side, so if this is M and N, if M is parallel to N, it's sloppy. If M is parallel to N, then the same side interior angles are going to be supplementary. Okay, that's the same side interior angle theorem, which says if the same side interior angles are, if M is parallel to N, then the same side interior angles are going to be supplementary. Okay, if M and N are parallel, then by the same side exterior angle theorem, the same side exterior angles are going to be supplementary as well. Okay. So that's six. Our seventh one is a linear pair. Pair. Okay. And we know linear pairs are adjacent and supplementary. So these two are going to add up to 180. All right, so we have seven angle pairs. Two of them are always going to be true. So vertical angles are always congruent. Um, so let's write always. Always. Linear pairs are always supplementary. Corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, and alternate exterior angles are um, congruent if Right. If M and N are parallel, same side interior, same side exterior are supplementary if M is parallel to N. Linear pairs are always supplementary. Vertical angles are always congruent. Okay, let's go back a couple slides to here. Let's solve for X and Y in both of these problems. Okay, in the first one, we have an X. So since there's only one point of intersection, you aren't going to have same side or alternate interior angles or any of those. It's just going to be vertical angles or linear pairs. So if we have, we know vertical angles are congruent and linear pairs are supplementary. So since linear pairs are supplementary, we can set up the equation 8x plus 23 plus 5x plus 14 equals 180. Okay, because these two angles are a linear pair, meaning they are supplementary. So their angles measures add up to 180. Okay, from there we can also set up another equation dealing with vertical angles. We know 8x plus 3y or 8x plus 23 is going to equal 4y plus 19, because we know vertical angles are congruent. Now we have two variables, two equations. Um, let's start with this one, because we only have one variable, which is x. So we can combine like terms and solve for x. 8x and 5x is 13x. 23 and 14 is 37. Okay. 
subtract 37, 13 X equals 143. Divide by 13. And then I think we get X equals 11. To get um, y, we then use our second equation, 8x plus 23 equals 4y plus 19. x is 11, so we can substitute it in for x. 8 times 11 plus 23 equals 4y plus 19. That's going to be 88 plus 23 equals 4y plus 19. That's going to be 111 equals 4y plus 19. Subtract 19. Um, 92 is going to equal 4y. Okay, divide by 4. We get y equals 23. Okay. We can substitute it back in to check if we needed to. Okay, the other equation we could have set up is 5x plus 14 plus 4y plus 19 equals 180 because these are a linear x and y 11 and 23 okay um next one okay we, again we have two variables um, we want to try to avoid putting two variables in one equation so we can set up two separate equations one for x and one for y um, we could do that these are vertical angles so that 3x plus 5 equals 4y minus 15 but again that gives us two variables in one equation then we can do x plus 15 equals y plus 20, but again, that gives us two variables in each equation, so we can avoid that by just using linear pairs. 3x plus 5 plus x plus 15 is 180. Then we can solve for x. 4x plus 20 is 180. Subtract 20. 4x equals 160. Divide by 4. x is going to be equal to 40. 40 plus 15 is um, 55. 40 times 3 is 120 plus 5 is 125. 125 plus 55 is 180. Okay. The other equation we can set up here is y plus 20 plus 4y minus 15 is 180. 5y plus 5 is 180. Subtract 5. 5x equals 175. x is going to equal, um, what is that, 20, 35? 35 plus 20. This is a y. Sorry. y. Y, 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 okay. 55 so we're good right that should be 55 because vertical angles are congruent the angle measures are equal 4 times 35 minus 15 that's going to give us um, 70 140 minus 15 is 125 so we know we have 125 so we know we're good Y is 35, X is 40. We can be happy and satisfied with those solutions. Okay. Right. Now we have one where we have two intersection points. So if there's only one intersection point, it's going to be a linear pair or vertical angles. Okay. If you have two intersection points, and you're dealing with two different vertices. It's going to be corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, same side interior angles, or same side exterior angles. Um, first thing we have to ask ourselves is what kind of angle pairs are these? These are corresponding angles. What do we know about corresponding angles? We know corresponding angles are congruent. So since they're congruent, their measures are going to equal each other. So 23x minus 5 is going to equal 21x plus 5. Subtract 21x from both sides. 
Okay, 2x minus 5 is going to equal 5. Add 5 to both sides. 2x equals 10. Divide by 2, and we get x equals 5. We substitute it in. We should get the same thing. 23 times 5 minus 5, and 21 times 5 plus 5. 21 times 5 is 105, plus 5 is 110. 23 times 5, is that true? Yes, it is true. 23 times 5 is going to give us um, 115. Minus 5 is going to give us 110, so we're good. 5 is our correct answer. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is figure out what kind of angles they are. These are corresponding angles. Okay, since the lines are parallel, the corresponding angle theorem tells us that if M and N are parallel, then they are going to be congruent. The corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, so they're going to equal each other. Um, let me find x. First thing we want to do is identify these types of angles. These are same side interior angles, so they're on the same side of the transversal. They're on the interior of the two lines. Um, oh, sorry, it's up. So it's telling us the lines are parallel. Sorry about that. It's, um, so since the lines are parallel and we have same side interior angles, then by the same side interior angle theorem, same side interior angle theorem, we know that if the lines are parallel, the same side interior angles are supplementary. So if they're supplementary, that means the angle measures add up to 180. So 8x plus 6 plus 14x minus 2 equals 180. Combine like terms. That's going to be 22x plus 4 equals 180. Subtract 4. 22x equals 176 divided by 22. 88 is 4. This looks like 88 times 2, which is going to give us 8. X is going to be 8. Yeah, X is going to be 8. We plug it in, we can see if our answer, substitute it in, I see if our answer is right. 8 times 8, 64, 64 plus 6 is 70. This one would hopefully be 110. 14 times 8, I don't know, what's 10 times 80 plus 32 is 112. Which is going to give us 110. So we know those add up to 180. So we know we have the right answer. Okay, so the key here is identify what kind of angles they are. Then you have your theorem that's going to tell you whether it's congruent or supplementary. So for the final, you guys have to know, you have to be able to identify the angle pair. There's seven angle pairs. Two occur when it's at the same intersection point. That's vertical angles and linear pairs. Um, and then we have two intersection points. You have the five uh, corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side interior, same side exterior. Okay. If the lines are parallel, then you can say that the corresponding angles, the alternate interior angles and the alternate exterior angles are congruent by the um, respective theorems. And you can say that if the lines are parallel, then the same side interior and same side exterior angles are supplementary by the respective So we got the proofs is all we have left for the end two here. Proofs is all we have left. 
So we are given M is parallel to N, and we want to prove that angle D and angle E are congruent. So here's the angle D, here's the angle E. So we have steps, reasons. All we start with our givens, which is that M is parallel to N. So here's M and here's N. These lines are parallel. They're cut by a transversal. We notice that D and E are alternate interior angles. Okay, but that's what we are trying to prove. We are trying to prove that the alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so we don't want to use that theorem. We want to find an indirect way to get there. Okay. So we want to go from D to something else that's congruent with. We can either go with A by the vertical angle theorem, or we can go by with H by the corresponding angle theorem. Let's go to H. So angle D is congruent to angle H. And the reasoning for that are that these are corresponding angles. And we know if the lines are parallel, which it tells us it is, because that's the given. If the lines are parallel, then by the corresponding angle theorem, the, all, the, the corresponding angles are congruent. So... If the lines are parallel, then the corresponding angle theorem, which says if the lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are congruent. So lines are parallel. So by the corresponding angle theorem, angle D is congruent to angle H. Okay. We also have the vertical angle theorem. Which tells us vertical angles are congruent. So we notice that H and E are vertical angles. So angle H is going to be congruent to angle E by the vertical angle theorem, which says vertical angles are congruent. Okay. okay, now we have D is congruent to H and H is congruent to E. So since we have two, we have H congruent to both D and E, we can use the transitive property to say that angle D is congruent to angle E, which is what we're trying to prove. Okay, and that is the transitive property of congruence. So transitive property of congruence. Okay. Transitive property says that if two things equal the same thing, then they equal each other. So if A equals B and B equals C, then A is going to equal C. So if a equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So for our, that's the transitive property of equality. For our purposes, it's just going to be the same thing for congruent. So if D is congruent to H and H is congruent to E, then D is congruent to E. Okay. Um, if they're equal to the same thing, they are equal to each other. If they're congruent to the same thing, they are congruent to each other. Um, we could also have used the substitution property here. If you thought about it, instead of saying they're both equal to H, congruent to H, therefore they're congruent to each other, and you thought about it as we're replacing H with D, we're substituting in a D for the H, because we know D and H are congruent, angle D and angle H are congruent. Um, then you could have put substitution here as well. So it could be or substitution. Final is multiple choice. So um, you just have to use whatever is provided for you. They're not going to give you both options. Last one for unit two review from in class. Uh, we have another proof. So we're given that M is parallel to N. Okay, we want to prove that angle C and angle E are supplementary. So let's start with angle C. Okay, what do we know angle C? Or let, let me fill it out and then see if you guys can fill in the reasons. So pause. The, let me fill out the steps, pause the video, and see if you guys can fill out the reasons. So I'm going to say angle C is, there's a lot of different ways to do this too. 
But I'm going to say angle C is congruent to angle F. Okay. Then I'm going to say F is, is supplementary to E. So angle F and angle E are supplementary. Okay. And then I'm going to say angle C and angle E are We'll stop the video and see if you can fill in the responses. All right, so uh, M is parallel to N. We know that is the given. Angle C is congruent to F. Why is angle C congruent to angle F? That is the alternate interior angle theorem. Alternate interior angle theorem, which says if the two lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. So if the lines are parallel, the alternate interior angle theorem tells us the alternate interior angle C and F are congruent. So angle C is congruent to angle F. Step three, then we said angle F and angle E are supplementary. Well, why could that be? Well, that's because they are a linear pair. We know linear pairs are always supplementary. That's by the linear pair theorem. which tells us linear pairs are supplementary. So since F and E are linear pairs, then they are going to be supplementary. Um, we now have a statement that says F and E. Um, if we put in the last statement that says C and E are supplementary, the only difference here is instead of putting an F, we're putting a C. So what property can we use to replace that F with a C? Well, we can use... Step two, where angle C is congruent to angle F. So we can use substitution. We're substituting in angle C for angle F because angle C is congruent to angle F. Um, so uh, that is unit two uh, from the in-class review questions. Um, I don't think I'm going to do unit three until... Um, after class Tuesday. So I'll do unit three and unit four after class Tuesday when we finish um, going over those.